Hey everybody, today is January 3rd and that means we are reading John chapter 3 today. Now I know John chapter 3 is a very familiar passage with probably the most familiar verse of all the verses in the Bible. Of course that would be John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, right? We see that in sporting events, we see that uh, on street signs, we see people picketing with that. We see that everywhere, but it's good to read uh, this chapter, to read the context. And so we see John chapter 3, and it talks about a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was, not only was he important, um, but he was uh, a part of the Sanhedrin. And really what that was is kind of what our Supreme Court is today, but it was the Jewish Supreme Court. So he was very educated. He was an elected official. He was highly chosen above many people. Um, so this isn't just like the run of a mill person, but this is a truly um, important person. And what's interesting is it says it comes to Jesus at night. He, he didn't want his other peers to uh, see him talking to him. He didn't want to be kind of um, mis misstrewed that he's with this Jesus guy. But it does tell us in this passage that he and some of the other people, some of the other people in the Sanhedrin have been talking about this Jesus. But really, you can divide up chapter 3 into three sections, right? Uh, the first part, verses 1 through 15, talks about that we must be born again. And Jesus and Nicodemus are in this conversation about being born again. Now, when he's talking about this, Jesus is speaking spiritually, he's thinking physically, but there's a couple things I want to point out, right? He's saying that we must be born again spiritually, but there's a verse in there, uh, verse 5, that says we must be born of water and of spirit. Uh, and the reason I want to take just a moment to talk about this is some people um, in different denominations use this verse to say or to prove um, that they must that a person must be baptized um, that before they could be saved. So a part of being baptized is a part of salvation. And this is what they're saying. He's saying that Jesus said we must be baptized by water and spirit, or born again by water and spirit, right? This baptism uh, of water and spirit. But what I want to show to you is that there's nowhere else and there's nowhere before this, and there's nowhere after this that shows us that people had to be baptized in order to be saved. But what I would say is he's talking about is he's using Old Testament language. Remember, Nicodemus is a Jew. He is a part of the Sanhedrin. He is a Pharisee. He is a person that knows the Old Testament very well. So when it says that we must be born again of water, he's referring to water and purification, something that we would see along the lines of Ezekiel chapter 36, talking about that we must be washed new, we must be washed clean, right? The, what Jesus is saying that he will do, right? His blood will do, will wash us clean. So not only do we have to be washed clean, but we must be born of the Spirit. And you notice in your Bible, that's a capital S, right? The Holy Spirit. So God is a part of that. So we must be washed through or with the Spirit. Um, and so I just wanted to point that out. The second section that we can divide chapter 3 is, is that God loves the world. And that's kind of verses 16 through 21, right? For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. He tells us that Jesus was a gift right? We didn't deserve it. It's not nothing that we earned, um, but Jesus was given as a gift. But if you keep reading, Jesus was a gift not to condemn, but to save. Now, this is important. When Jesus came to earth, when Jesus came to us, Jesus was sent by God from a gift not to condemn the world, but to save the world, to give salvation. But that doesn't mean that one day there will be condemnation, right? He's, what, what Jesus is referring to is at that point, right, and up to now, up until Jesus comes back again, Jesus has come to save. But when Jesus comes again, the saving is over and the condemnation starts, right? Jesus comes back and says, whoever does not believe in him shall be cast into, um, into hell or into Hades, uh, with Satan. So we kind of have this. So uh, Jesus does love the world. He came to save the world, but he is coming again to condemn the world. 
And that's why it's our part to accept Christ and to tell others um, about the love of Jesus Christ. So we, um, we see the three parts, right? Must be born again. Uh, God loves the world. And then lastly, we see how John the Baptist exalts Jesus. We kind of see this tiff between the disciples of John the Baptist trying to figure out who he is. And John the Baptist says, you guys have heard me say many times, I'm not Jesus. I'm not the Messiah. Um, and he goes on and he says, Jesus is the Messiah. And he makes two important things that uh, that I think we can hang our hats on at the end of chapter three. One is verse 27. He says, we have nothing unless God gives it to us. Think about that. Anything that we have is because our God, our creator, our sustainer, our savior gives it to us. And then in the very last verse in verse 30, uh, John the Baptist points out that he is not Christ. Can he, when he says, uh, he says that, I, that Jesus must increase so that I can decrease. And John the Baptist is just saying something that we must personally know and do in our lives. We must become less so Jesus can become more. What a great way to end chapter three. I hope you guys are loving this. Hope you're getting this. I hope you're seeing something new and fresh. And we will see you um, this morning in church. Today is Sunday. And so I hope that you um, uh, come to church and be a part of that. Um, notice that our prayer focus for today is to pray, pray for uh, the visitors that are coming to our church. Pray for the people who come to our church that does not know Jesus Christ, that they may hear his news and that they must believe in the name of Jesus Christ. We will see you guys tomorrow. God bless.